Okay, stop, 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 stop. Oh, turn, turn. She is an angry girl. Oh god, turn, turn in, turn in, turn in. Hello there, minions, it's Wheezy. Today I want to talk to you about tuning in Forza Motorsport. I've been playing this game a lot, and one of the things, if you saw my kind of review video on it, is that I'm enjoying the sort of RPG, ranking up your car sort of element of it. Um, and the way that you go through series races involves essentially leveling up the car, unlocking more parts and upgrades that you can use to make the car better, and then continuing to compete in the race. Uh, series against higher and higher performance index cars. So I figured what I'd do is take you through some of the basics of tuning. For those of you who maybe aren't huge into sim racers or are relatively new, the game itself doesn't actually do a great job beyond the basic explanation of the parts, telling you kind of how they impact your car. And if you're not a car person, um, then it may not be uh, super intuitive now, to you. I used this so what I'm going to do is go grab uh, one for one of the race thoughts. series, and it was a really fantastic explanation or illustration of how dramatically parts can affect the performance of the car. Um, so basically, I just kind of want to walk you through uh, some of the parts that I use for this. So this has actually been upgraded quite a bit uh, for the race series that I used it in. So what we're going to do is just strip all of this stuff off and go take it back to stock and just kind of walk you through what a lot of these parts do. So we've got a stock 1991 BMW M3. And one of the things that I noticed with this car, and we'll just throw it on a course and um, drive it around a little bit and kind of talk you through the handling characteristics of it. All right, so let's do some laps of Laguna Seca, this BMW, and kind of talk you through some of the performance here, and then we'll jump into some of the parts to make the car better. So one of the things to keep in mind in general when tuning up your car is to focus on what is slowing your lap times. Identify the things that your car needs to have faster lap times. So we're going to just start lapping here and kind of talk you through what I'm experiencing. So. You can probably already tell, you can hear the tires squealing a bit um, through the corners and the body on the car actually rolls quite a lot through the turns. Ooh, brakes are not super great either. So let's just take it through a couple of turns. The things that I noticed with uh, this car primarily are that it actually had decent power kind of starting out. So. It was uh, losing traction, accelerating out of turns. Um, and also quite a lot of body roll. So here you can see if I really put the throttle down, that back end kicks out. I did that to kind of illustrate the point. That means that essentially, A, there's a decent amount of power, and we're trying to get the power down to the track, you know, via the tires. So tires would be a really good option for helping get more of that power and that more acceleration down onto the road surface. And you can see here as we're rolling into these turns, that back end is also kicking out. Um, so better tires would also help with our traction so that we don't lose uh, that traction through these turns as much. See how it's kind of sliding into that into that turn? So, so one of the things that pretty much every car can benefit from straight out of the gate is better tires. Um, in Forza, one of the first things that you get to unlock for most cars is tire width, which just increases the contact patch with the road. Um, so that's a good option. Um, you usually, it's a little bit later on before you unlock the different uh, like sport or race tire compounds, which are even more effective at helping your car get traction, uh, but they tend to cost quite a bit more of your car points, they increase your performance overall, and like I said, early on in series, they won't really be unlocked. Um, so that's kind of good to know. So what we'll do, since I'm kind of, ooh, relearning the characteristics of this car, uh, let's do a couple of laps, get a lap time for this car uh, with just stock, and then we'll start talking through some upgrades.
Cross the line! Alright, 152. Not too shabby, so let's go and, and throw some parts on the car. And we'll do this one part at a time, just kind of see. So what I saw from the car in that, on those laps, is again, losing a lot of traction. So really, tires are one of the first things that we want to do. There's also a lot of body roll in the corners. So suspension is something that would be very helpful as well to help keep the body level through the corners, which again helps increase traction. So the first thing that we're going to do, and one of the first things that you'll unlock as you're ranking up a car, is changing the tire width. And I recommend, just in general, um, I just keep these kind of matched. For a lot of cars, the rear tire width can be increased quite a bit more than the front tire width, and that's okay. But I wouldn't probably put a lot of extra uh, tire width on the front and not the rear, for instance. You probably want the fatter tires in the rear, um, especially in a rear-wheel drive car for acceleration. But really, so it says here in the description, right? More rubber on the road means better performance, which is true. Tires are the only part of the car that actually touches the road, so they are a huge impact in performance, especially in a car like this. So we will go ahead and just put on wider tires and do a couple of laps and show you kind of the difference uh, in what we're going to see there. And the first thing that you're going to notice is basically less tire skidding uh, through the corners, um, the ability to turn kind of at faster speeds, the ability to accelerate harder without breaking traction and sliding that back end out, and that will turn into um, faster lap times. Also, it does increase braking performance as well, that better traction. With ABS on, basically the car can brake harder before the uh, wheels lock up, and so ABS has less uh, interference and the car can brake faster too. So, Just in general, tires are a very important upgrade. I know there's probably for a lot of people the, uh, you know, the most I don't want to say famous, but the most well-known aspect of car performance that people think of is horsepower, right? The amount of power the car has. Really fast, expensive cars have a lot of horsepower, typically. Uh, but when it comes to performance on the road, if you just throw a bunch of horsepower in your car without the ability to get that horsepower onto the road, either via tires or suspension, then you're just going to be spinning your tires and not being able to use any of that power. So, understanding how your car is performing, and then adjusting where that performance is lacking. So, for instance, with uh, one of the race series, I was using um, the Ferrari Roma, which has a ton of power. It's a twin turbocharged, I think, V8. Um, and so it just had buckets of power. And I couldn't hardly use any, it, any of it, because accelerating out of corners, it would just spin the tires all the way through third, fourth gear. Um, so for that car, what I really needed was uh, better tires uh, were the most important thing. Weight reduction can also help with traction and stuff like that. Um, but then also suspension. That car had a decent suspension out of the box because obviously it's a supercar. Um, so like anti-roll bars can be a way to help increase a little bit of that uh, flatness through corners. Um, but yeah, throwing extra power into an already powerful car that's spinning its tires is really not going to be as helpful as throwing on some racing slicks or doing some weight reduction. So already 150, so that's what? Already two seconds faster just on that first uh, lap. So let's do one more just to get a good baseline. And let's see, in this corner here, I'm still going down to second gear here for this turn, so it hasn't increased our cornering performance that dramatically, but... I mean, two seconds on a lap is a significant increase in car performance. So, And you can see there is less skidding and sliding through the corners, although you see that the car, the body, is leaning into those turns, and that's helping pull that weight off of those tires. So even with the wider tires, still losing traction. So the next thing that we'll do is put some suspension and improvements on the car and try and reduce some of this body roll through the corners so that the, the weight of the car doesn't go sloshing to the far side during the corners and really throw the traction off. out of that last 
last sector. Let's see what we got. Wait, cut off a tenth. So those are two pretty consistent laps on these tires at 150. So let's go ahead and back out of here again. And let's firm up this suspension. Basically what I'm showing you here is how much improvement in performance we can get without even adding power to the car. So depending on what you unlock first, whether it be anti-roll bars or springs uh, and dampers, I believe for this car you unlock anti-roll bars first. And that uh, alone is, is enough to kind of help out. But just generally speaking, even if we just do something simple like throw on a, a sport suspension here, that should really dramatically uh, reduce our body roll in the corner. As we can see in the description there, spring and dampers help control weight transfer, maintain optimum ride height. And they also give you some extra additions uh, or adjustments for tuning, which we'll call you know advanced tuning if you're working on like toe and camber. But uh, we're gonna stick to the basics of basically swapping out parts on this. So let's throw this suspension on here and see the difference it makes. So. Already you'll probably see here that the car is a lot less rolly through the turns. That weight transfer is being reduced significantly, which means we'll keep better traction through those turns and be able to turn at higher speed without, you know, kicking that back end out. So let's do a couple laps here and see how this translates into better performance. I'm also noticing that the car is accelerating quite a bit better out of the turns because it's got better traction coming through those corners. The car definitely feels a lot more stable and predictable through the turns too. There's less of me having to worry about counter steer and a lot more of just pointing the car in towards the apex and then accelerating out. Again, so not a haven't seen much of an increase on the lap time there right out of the gate. Do one more lap and see where we're at. We get on the car a little bit harder through these turns too, since we have that extra traction. Sometimes when you're adding enhancements to a car, it can be tricky if you've done a couple of races with it and gotten used to it you know, needing a certain amount of speed through a corner, and then all of a sudden you've got some extra performance, it can be a little tricky to utilize all that performance. You can see we didn't push all the way to the edge of the track there, so we even under-accelerated in that turn, but already we're another half second ahead of that lap time. Broke a little early into that. Cut the track just a little bit there. up and across the line 149 let's say 149.2 oh but it didn't track it because we cut the track there but we did not gain uh, a half second or more from that so we are definitely getting better performance through the corners like look at that ability to kind of accelerate through there more we kicked out the tires a little bit at the end there um, so we could probably use a little bit more traction through like some better tires at this point but with the way the car is handling right now, it feels a lot more stable through the turns. There's not all of that body roll. And I feel like what would really help the car at this point would be more acceleration through the straights. So this is where I would start putting basically a little more power into the car. And then once I basically put more power into the car and I start finding that I'm reaching the edge of the traction on the tires again, or the suspension, then I would buff that up to kind of catch up. So then it would be kind of this uh, balancing act between increasing power and increasing the ability to get that power to the road. Also, um, I should have downshifted earlier there. Uh, also, when you're talking about braking performance, especially from a race standpoint, 
can be really helpful for passing if you can break later into turns and harder. It will increase your lap times overall, but especially from the standpoint of racing. Um, passing cars by breaking later into corners is a really effective strategy. So that can, that can come into play. But yeah, what I'm kind of trying to get across mostly with this video is increasing car performance in simulation racing games is not all about power. Alright, so it's going to give us a nice clean lap there. And we're down in the 149. So not a huge difference, but a noticeable one as far as performance. So what I would want to do next is add some more power, but another good example of this, one of the other series, the Miata series, um, starting out with a stock Miata, it actually had decent handling and performance. It wasn't super rolly through the corners. Um, so the first thing that that car needed was some extra power before it needed extra tires or extra suspension. Um, so it really kind of depends from car to car. So this is where understanding how the car performs um, really makes a difference. So what we'll do is just kind of briefly go through uh, the parts you have available here and kind of talk through uh, kind of what they do and how they apply to the car's performance. So exhausts, air filters, fuel systems, ignitions, these things basically increase the performance of the engine. They're overall just going to increase your horsepower, um, meaning the car will accelerate faster, have a faster top speed, generally speaking. And so if you think of these in terms of like categories of performance, tires and suspension apply more towards maintaining your traction. Um, so you can think of that if you see this uh, over here, the performance kind of grid that they have. Um, it's got speed, braking, handling, and acceleration. The handling is, is gonna be largely impacted by, well, the weight of the car for one thing, but largely the suspension and the tires. The braking is gonna be the tires and the actual brakes themselves. And acceleration and speed um, are going to be mostly related to power, uh, although uh, uh, horsepower most directly correlates to top end speed. Um, it also correlates obviously directly to acceleration, but that can be also heavily influenced by weight. So a car with a thousand horsepower that weighs one ton versus a car with a thousand horsepower that weighs two tons, even though they have the same power, you know, there will be a big difference in acceleration. So. So think of those kind of categories. So a lot of these exhaust, air filter, those are gonna be power, will be related to top speed and acceleration. When it's got tires and platform and handling, this is when you're getting into like suspension, right? So tires are ultimately gonna be the most effective thing you can put on the car. If you throw race tires on your car, you're just gonna have better performance across the board. Um, within the limits of if you have a really low powered car throwing you know really sticky race tires on a car that can can't even max out uh its speed through the turns anyway that's where it comes to that balancing act but generally speaking tires are going to be the most effective upgrade to your car um so that's really a good place to spend your points up front again depending on the default suspension on the car if the car doesn't roll a lot through the corners and it's pretty stable you don't necessarily need to go straight for the suspension upgrades but if it's a car like this where you get a lot of body roll in the corners um, doing those suspension upgrades can be extremely helpful weight reduction much like tires is another one of those things that just dramatically impacts all around performance since the car is lighter everything is going to basically improve um, the overall top speed it doesn't say improves because that's kind of, again most directly correlated with horsepower what the engine's capable of producing at that top end um, but Having a lighter car makes it accelerate faster, makes it corner better, makes it stop faster. So weight reduction after tires is probably the next most uh, impactful uh, upgrade you can do to your car to increase performance. Um, those are kind of the basics to keep in mind when going through those upgrades. Transmissions and driveline uh, is good for increasing shifting, especially in some of these older cars where they shift kind of more slowly. You'll see the, the difference between shifts. Um, these can make those upshifts snappier, which can increase your acceleration. You know, having a, a better clutch um, or a lightweight clutch um, can increase your overall performance. So these, again, these kind of fall into those fine tuning pieces. If, if you've got the, the traction where you like it, if you've got the power mostly where you like it, and you've got like a hundred car points left over, you know, then maybe throw in an upgraded clutch to kind of help add that little bit of acceleration to it. 
Aerodynamics is another good thing. Although I kind of, this is one of the last things I think you unlock for a car. This kind of falls into that this, uh, similar realm as tires, where basically what you're doing is increasing traction by essentially have, using aerodynamics, using the force of the car moving through the air to push the car down into the road and increase your traction. So if you've upgraded your tires and you've upgraded your suspension and you still are having trouble getting traction through turns, then aerodynamics can be a way to get some extra downforce through that. One thing to call out about downforce um, is it increases your traction, so you definitely uh, corner better, but it does add drag, which will decrease your overall uh, top speed. Um, not not necessarily by a huge amount, but it's just important to know that, that adding drag to the car to increase traction is on its own uh, a trade-off that you'll kind of have to keep into account. So I think that's pretty good kind of just quick talk through through the basics of car tuning uh, and how parts impact your car. Really, this is this is kind of one of the main aspects that I love about sim racers like Gran Turismo and Forza is getting a feel for how the cars behave in a very real sense and then being able to modify them to just make them better by understanding what it is about a car that makes it perform better or worse. If I went into this car and didn't really understand what I was doing, Instead of getting that power down to the road, I was like, you know what? I want maximum power. We'll just dump a bunch of power in there. Matter of fact, we could even do something wild. Like, we could throw a turbo on there. A race turbo. So you can see we've dramatically increased our performance index there. But let's take it out to the track. And we'll probably, honestly, let's let's just run this out. We will probably, with that amount of power, increase we'll get in the straights may make up for what we might lose in the corners. But let's just see. Oh, the car's really rolly. Yeah, and it just, it is having a hard time putting that power down. But you'll see, it's obviously accelerating a lot faster down the straights. Ooh, 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 it's also heavier with that. <laughs> so braking is more impacted. So let's, let's do a hot lap with all this power and see how that matches up. I mean, it is screaming. But without, ooh, without better brakes, ooh, she does not want to stop. <laughs> oh, and she's hard, having trouble cornering and putting that power down. Oh, yeah. This is not going to be a clean lap, so we'll do one more after this once I kind of get a feel for the power. Oh, man. Oh, that is nasty. She is a beast. Oh, the mint, honestly, with this much power... Probably the first thing that I would put in after this would be brakes, because holy shit. She gets screaming on the straights, but then it takes her a long time to slow down. Oh my god, stop, 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 stop. Oh god, stop. Jesus. <laughs> turn, turn. Okay. All right, I got a little bit of an idea for how crazy she is. So we'll kind of try and play it easy through the corners and just see if we can get a decent hot lap out of just the pure speed here. Although we're probably gonna come in under 150 again just from all this power, look at that. Even with that nasty ass lap, 147. But remember, we put in like 3,000 car points worth of power into this, so versus putting in like what do we put in? Like six or eight hundred points worth of tires and suspension. But oh man, she is she is a handful. One of the things that you also want to be interested in in racing uh, is consistency, right? So it's one thing to be able, okay, well I've got enough power to increase my lap times here, but. Uh, how controllable is the car? How likely am I to just lose control of the back end through a turn and just absolutely blow my lap or even crash the car? Oh, Jesus. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Oh, turn, turn. She is an angry girl. Oh god, turn, turn in, turn in, turn in. Oh yeah, she's just torturing those tires there. Woo! Come 
146. Alright, so now, you know what? Let's do one more step here. And let's put this whole package together. So let's go in here. Because we've obviously pumped a lot of freaking power in there. We got 1,900 car points available. Let's throw on some racing tires. Some race suspension. We will pull a little bit more power out of this thing. Because we have two, we've over allocated our points there. Okay, so let's pull that out. And then you know what? We'll even we'll even throw in a little bit of clutch. So let's go do a hot lap and see what we got here. Ooh, listen to her. Oh yeah, so you can see she's cornering a lot more flat through the corners. Better traction. Oh, I, I should have put brakes on her. So that would have been that would have been nice, but even without the brakes, we're gonna go for it. Oh, she's still skittering through the corners a little bit there. All right, let's get this hot lap and see what she's got. I'm gonna have to be braking really early into these corners just because of the stock brakes on the race car here, basically. And you lose a lot of time from having to basically brake earlier and not accelerate as much through the course. But you can tell already, the car is way more controllable. She still has a lot of power, and those back tires still want to kick out. So I would probably still put on wider tires before I would put this much power in. Basically, this is still a little too much power. Although, sometimes that, depending on the course, sometimes you can make up for it by being able to just blast down longer straights with more power. Get my shift points right. And even without better brakes, the car is actually still braking better just from the better tires. Oh yeah, she is skittering. Might want to put some anti-roll bars on this too, because that back end still wants to kick out. Ooh, definitely overcooked that corner. Let's power out. We, as you can tell, look, we're still way ahead there. Boom, 139. So yeah, that, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how the differing uh, parts can make a huge impact uh, on the performance of the car uh, around the course. If you guys uh, enjoyed that video, feel like you learned something, leave me a like. If you guys didn't like learning nerdy shit about cars, that's okay, leave me a dislike. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see more s stuff, cars, guns, anything entertaining. And I'll see you guys in the next one.